relative of dyslexia in the classroom. And the pages that I'm giving out to you there are called the coronal load taking system. And again, just to recap on what the coronal load taking system is, it's a way of actually uh, short cutting your notes and taking brief notes of what I actually say in the class rather than you having to take down reams of information. Now, in the last time we looked at the role of the SNA in the classroom, we looked at how the SNA role has changed and how the SNA role has been modified and how it has evolved in the likes of America and in the UK as well. And we also briefly looked at some laws and acts. The practical class also looked at using the mind mapping software, which is what I'm after going through in terms of revision for the last couple of minutes. Before I actually commence the presentation, at the start of last week's class, I handed around the page asking you to write down eight kinds of questions which you'd like me to answer for the duration of the course. And I have found three particular questions here that I'd like to answer for you. That's great, thank you. So, first of all, there was one person pointed out they would like ideas for the child that cannot read in fifth class and to help an eight-year-old child that had no interest in learning or how to read or how to learn. And finally then, ideas for a child with autism who cannot read. So, really, with the, with the main idea that's running through this thread is the concept of reading. Well, there is one particular program that we're actually going to cover in the practical class, and it's called Claro Read version 8. And it, this is a type of text-to-speech software. And it's a program that you can use with your pupils to use a variety of different features when the child is reading or writing or wishes to use it for spelling. And I will look at that in a lot more depth during the practical class. Okay? But th there are other programs out there like Text and Read and Write Goals, which is also used to address reading, writing and spelling problems as well. But ideally for primary school, the Clara Read would be a more suitable and a more user friendly. And like I just said here, after the break, we will go through the Clara Read program and I have a few sets of notes there as well. Okay? So for tonight's class, what the aims of the presentation are is to discuss participants' questions from the single page, which is what I'm just after doing. Next then, I'll be looking at the whole concept of learning disabilities and dis debating with you the whole idea behind learning disabilities, which will be closely followed by analysing the theme of dyslexia. I'll be also discussing which are the different types of daily problems that pupils with dyslexia experience. And these is just something of a flavour of the difficulties which these pupils experience so that you can get a better knowledge and equip yourself with better information as to what problems these pupils are experiencing. I'll be also looking at exploring the range of problems affecting primary school pupils as well as examining their strengths and finally then, from your point of view, discussing how SNAs can actually help dyslexic pupils. For the practical class then, I'll be looking at the Clara Reed software. So is that okay with you? So far? Okay. Now, so I'm just after going through the questions there in terms of identifying suitable software for reading problems. And the, the two programs that I've mentioned are Clara Reed and Text and Read and Write Goals. The Clara Read is a specially technology program that you'll be using after the lecture. The text program is another type of text to speech software, but it's also a more advanced form of Clara Read. That's what I, I'd just like to point out to you. Okay, so looking then at the whole concept of learning disabilities, for the next couple of slides what I'm going to do is provide you with a number of definitions pertaining to the whole concept behind learning disabilities. And basically one definition outlined states that learning disabilities are a heterogeneous group of disorders manifested by significant difficulties in the acquisition and use of listening, speaking, reading, writing, reasoning or mathematical abilities. Basically, it's problems got to do with listening, speaking, reading, writing, reasoning or mathematical abilities. 
and it can relate to any type of learning difficulty, be it dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, Asperger's syndrome, Tourette's syndrome, and so forth. Then you have this concept called comorbidity. And in layman's terms, what comorbidity refers to is where two particular types of learning difficulties exist at the one time. And it's very important for you to keep in mind that just because a child has dyslexia does not mean that they can have other problems as well. They could have characteristics of dyspraxia, they could have characteristics of Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, a whole host of other different types of learning difficulties. And it's important that when you are actually working with the pupil, that you say to yourself, right, how else can I help this child? Okay, if the child is, is succeeding in items A, B and C, what other sort of problems does this child have? And are they related to the dyslexia problems or could it be something else? So you're actually questioning yourself and you're questioning the child as to what else does this uh, child have and how else can you help them? That's what I'm just trying to say. A very important reference that would be well worth taking a note of down at the bottom of those pages is NAL and it's www.nal.ie which stands for the National Adult Literacy Agency and what they state is that people experiencing specific learning difficulties can have a comorbidity of problems basically they can have a selection or a combination of different problems and just to recap on what I was saying, that NADA describes comorbidity as being defined as two SLDs presented at the same time. In certain cases, individuals who have dyslexia can also experience a combination of other problems as well. Now, that's just an overview of learning difficulties. When you speak about learning difficulties, you're talking about Asperger's syndrome, dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyslexia, ADHD and so forth. Now what I'm going to do is look at the whole concept of dyslexia. And a number of definitions exist for dyslexia. To keep in mind there's no one specific definition that will def definitively state and explain and fully decide what dyslexia is about. So over the next few slides I'm trying to give you a flavour of different definitions and what they all relate to. What Crombie states is that dyslexia consists of specific language difficulties within a continuum from mild to severe which are discrepant with performance in other areas. So the types of problems that children with dyslexia can experience can range from mild to moderate and from moderate into severe. When the difficulties start in primary school they can manifest themselves and develop into worse difficulties and problems for the ACN child when they reach secondary school. So it's important that the earlier a child is diagnosed and the earlier a child's problems are addressed, the better. The National Working Party on Dyslexia in Higher Education states that dyslexia is, according to them, a complex condition of neurological origin considered as a specific learning difficulty despite adequate or high intelligence. So really what you have to take from that is, just because a child with dyslexia is unable to read or unable to write, they can have and present with high intelligence in certain areas. And that's a very important thing to keep in mind. The Arts and Dyslexia Society states their definition of dyslexia as being a problem with different forms of language including addition to problems of reading, a problem with proficiency in writing and spelling. So they are emphasising the real problems associated with dyslexia pertain to reading, writing and spelling. But if you look at the other definition up here, they're saying, okay, it's of neurological origin, but these students can have high intelligence. Crucially then, also defines dyslexia as being a problem in the use of words, how they are identified, what they mean, how they are handled in combination, how they are pronounced and how they are spelled. So this definition is focusing more on the use of words, the use of language, the use of printed matter. 
Where is the report of the task force on dyslexia? Again, another important reference that you can look up on in Google. So you go to Google and you can just type in report of the task force on dyslexia. State that there's other problems as well, including phonological processing, working memory, rapid naming and automaticity of basic skills, difficulties in organisation, sequencing and motor skills may also be present. So they are explaining the, the definition as well. And the British Dyslexia Association, which is an excellent source of reference as well, and another one well worth taking down, states that it affects the underlying skills that are needed for learning to read, to write and to spell. So as you can see, by looking at the number of definitions that I have outlined there on the screen, Dyslexia can be associated with problems associated with reading and writing and spelling. There's memory problems, organisational problems, sequencing problems as well. Now, for those of you that do have pupils with dyslexia, would anyone like to contribute some information or some pointers on what I've just spoken about? Or any? Yes? I have a child in Duke class who was very intelligent. Yes. Answer any questions. Okay. It's right to write it down what is happening. It's important for the students to pass. Okay. You know, yeah. It's really easy. It is. It is. And that is a very, very clear point. Because what you have to keep in mind is just because they have a weakness with either reading or writing, they are highly intelligent in their own way. It's so frustrating for a child because and you will see in later on in my presentation where I speak about the stress factor as well. Mm -hmm. And in next week's class we're actually going to be dealing with an aspect of voice recognition software where you we'll actually use a piece of voice recognition software to actually dictate information onto a computer screen. And that is an overtake of software. Well, So for instance, if you have a child that has dyslexia, but they may also have dyspraxia. And dyspraxia is looking at a type of coordinational problem. Problems such as not being able to tie their shoelaces, not being able to cycle a bicycle, not being able to kick a football, not being able to throw things, uh, not being able even you know, to actually follow particular instructions within a class. And even using something like mind mapping software for a child with dyspraxia, because the difficulties associated with dyspraxia overlap with the difficulties associated with dyslexia. And even doing something like using a mind mapping, if you felt that the child doesn't have great uh, memory retention or is, lacks the proper organization skills, that would be one way around it as well. So, this continuum can be based in terms of mildly, moderately or severely dyslexic and if you are speaking about a child with mild dyslexia you are looking at the likes of short term problems. For a, a child with moderate dyslexia they can have short term memory problems plus poor phonological skills. Phon phonological skills deal with the sounds which letters make, okay? as well as visual spatial problems. Points. If you are speaking about a child with severe dyslexia, they can suffer from the previous three problems as well as speech and language problems and poor motor skills. So the idea behind it is that it's very, very hard to actually definitively identify one particular characteristic 
and one a set of other problems then for a child with dyslexia. And the types of problems which dyslexic learners face on a daily basis can be based in terms of information processing, such as receiving, holding and structuring information. Now what is that? So in terms of like, dealing with instructions, the, the, the child that you're working with in class, can he follow instructions quite clearly or do you have to spell everything out? Well, well, he can follow them quite clearly. And w would he be able to comprehend the number of instructions or would you have to give him maybe just two and he can do those? No, yeah, not to give too many. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, the, even using something like the brainstorming, using something like the mind mapping, even just to map out the instructions or to map out the tests, and it can be a great way of actually dealing with information processing problems as well. Again, if you are giving instructions, make sure that they are clear and spell it out for the child. That's quite important. If you have or if a child with dyslexia has problems with information processing, this can impact on skills such as reading, writing, using symbols, carrying out calculations, as well as other instructions. It's very important to remember that no two people with dyslexia are exactly the same and their types of difficulties will vary from person to person. It's the same with dyspraxia, Asperger's syndrome and other types of learning difficulties as well. You know that if you have a problem with either reading or writing or if you're not able to do a test because you a certain amount of level of frustration. A classic example might have been not being able to use the Snapdrop graphics tool in that week's exercise to actually create your mind that or even maybe getting a little bit frustrated with using the shapes tool. Would it be correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Now that causes so much stress and frustration to us. But for a child with dyslexia that's encountering a, a difficulty every single day of the week increases their stress levels beyond measurability and it really affects their self-esteem. Certainly a lack of confidence or low confidence, poor self-esteem and if a child is encountering a problem every single day of the week it's like if you're going to work and you are working with someone that you don't want to work with and you have to work with them, you have to deal with their issues and so forth, you have to interact with them and etc. That can affect your self-esteem and it affects your overall behaviour. The same analogy applies to a child with dyslexia who has this reading problem and or writing problem and their spelling problem and it leads to severe behavioural problems. It can also apply to a child with the dyspraxia, autism, Asperger's syndrome and so forth. It can lead to levels of high stress and anxiety and possibly on a worst case scenario too, depression. Okay? So it's important that you as the SNA act as this middle person between the SEM child and the teacher and that you constantly give them the confidence and the reinsurance that they so need. And an example would be if a child is asked to read a line of text and it can read 7 out of the 10 words perfectly a -OK, and they're getting stuck in the 3 words what are the 3 words would you say to them look John, you're after reading that sentence you're after getting 7 out of the 10 words perfectly correct you only got stuck in 3 small of the words and we will we'll spend a couple of minutes working on them and what you would do is you try and maybe spell out the word for the child, ask the child then to spell it back to you, ask them then to pronounce the word and get them then to uh, repeat it. And you can use the software such as like the text speed software or the cloud read software to actually read the information back. And you, you, you work on the problems that are causing the child the greatest difficulty. And you keep working on those until they have a better comprehension of the actual words in question. Now, with the child that you work with in your own class, have you tried any new strategies or any new techniques or what has worked for you or what hasn't worked for you? I haven't known. Yeah. Okay. At the time, he had not.
But they tend to send in the greatest of the writer because trying to keep them
But we can only follow the instructions of teachers that they're going to the classroom. We're not allowed to go ahead and do your own. You're there really to treat them with their care needs. Mm. Yeah. 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 And do any of you, and have any of you actually got engaged in terms of helping the church how to read or to write? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, do you see that what we were saying yeah. in the last, last week? Mm-hmm. Like, this is your job description. What do you think? It's just so yes. I'm the complete opposite. The teacher where I am is absolutely nothing because the child is in fifth class, but he's at a level of maybe first, second class. But I prepare everything for him, absolutely everything. Everything, okay. They would never, and she would never check what he does. Mm-hmm. Never. And would you feel that, that by using it, he's looking like the money that he can get there? Yes, okay. It's just oh. that I mean, his come in June, to me to decide if I want to go on to in September. Okay, you see, that's okay, and that is a fair point. And that's why, after the practical, or sorry, after the lecture tonight, and at the start of the practical, you will be actually using a piece of sample. And this is why you can suggest to the class teacher or to the resource teacher, within reasonable limits, that you're after learning about using car or reading. This is what I like about it, and feel free to say, and look, this is what the sample can do, which I think that it should be able to do. But in, in the situation that we are dealing with, I feel that the sufferer will get the child in question. It, 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 it is a bit of a vicious circle where you're only told to do A, B, and C, but in actual fact you do everything from A to Z. And if you are good at that, and if you are good, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel, even from what I have just spoken about, some of the, the issues and some of the problems, that is it increasing your knowledge so far? Yeah. Okay. okay, good. Okay. Look, we'll just continue on with, with the lecture. So, some of the weaknesses, again, whether it is with this lecture or with some of the other learning difficulties, include literacy numbers as well as having strengths as well. So, looking more closely at the range of difficulties which affect dys- dyslexic pupils at primary school, mainly are composed of reading, writing and spelling, maths, memory, organisation and stress. And when you look at the reading problems, a whole host of different types of reading problems do exist. The, the child in question can be quite hesitant and slow at actually reading aloud. They can often omit words or even substitute their own words for something else and it might even make any sense. They can read at a reasonable rate, but with, with low level of comprehension. So, they're reading at a particular pace, but they're not understanding, or they're not comprehending, or getting the gist of the actual content. They can often display symptoms in terms of failing to recognize familiar words. They can often miss a line of text and read, even read the same line twice. They can often lose the place, or they might have to use their finger while they're reading and they then they move their finger off of the, the line of text and they skip a line. They can often have problems identifying the main idea in a passage, as well as having problems looking up dictionaries or directories or even encyclopedias or even sometimes using Google on a computer to look up a word. Because, you know, in order to be able to spell a word, you have to know what the word looks like how you actually spell it, what letters you actually use, how they're actually formed, and the order of them. And for the likes of us, we take these things for granted. Now, when we're actually using the, te- the, the text-speech software, that will eliminate a lot of the problems for the reading because you can actually hear the text being read back to you. So if you knew an exercise that was coming up maybe in two or three days' time, you could actually have it scanned in, saved on the memory stick, and when the children is using the computer, let them use the headphones, or like what we have here, and they can actually hear the text being read back. And the, the text is being suffered will only work for timed text, not for handwritten text. So it's just a nice thing to keep in mind. The problems associated with writing. The, the poor standard of written work completed to oral abilities. So basically just a sheer pure standard, a poor standard of written work. Badly formed letters, 
Other children could have good handwriting, but their production of work is very, very slow compared to their friends and other peers in the class. They could have badly set out work with lots of spelling errors, lots of crisscross marks on it. Their words can be spelled differently in one piece. They can often get confused between upper and lower case letters. They can even write very little, but yet at the same time write to the point. They can have problems with note taking and organising their work. Now, I know that these are only just a selection of problems, and you, you, like you will ask yourself, well, can they actually do anything right? Of course they can, because they can have major strengths in terms of creativity, such as art, music, modelling, maybe older students having uh, good skills with woodwork and metal work, just the, the, the actual creativity side. In terms of problems with maths, when you look at maths, the majority of us would think, oh, that's just got to do with A, B, C and numbers and so forth, but that's not the case. What happens if a child has a maths-based problem that's actually written in English? A simple idea, but can cause great difficulty. They can also find sequencing difficult, as well as getting confused between signs, like the plus and the multiplication, which one is which, division and subtraction, which one is which. Misreading questions, including words. A big problem is getting confused between left and right. Finding mental arithmetic difficult, especially at speed. And that's why sometimes it has been suggested that overlearning a particular uh, concept, whether it's like max tables or so forth, is possibly one way of, around of helping a child to actually learn multiplication tables or subtraction tables or division. Have any of you ever tried out overlearning or teaching an overlearning concept to a child you have yourself? And how has it worked or what didn't work for you? It depends on the child. It yes. You know, it depends Fair on point. the child. I have two boys in mind and one of them is really good at the Yeah. And the other lad forget about it. Yeah. You know, like, in, like what you're saying there about like one of my boys is in six class going to second class. Okay. And like what you're saying there about you know having problems with writing and on reading and reading, yes. Like, that's the way the project math goes to class. Like the project math, for second school, is all reading mm -hmm. and English. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So these kids are going to have serious, serious problems. And that's why so, that they're supposed to have the scanner across the speech, the text mm -hmm. speech software. And so they don't get it. They don't get it. That's the problem. Yeah. And what they need to find out, they have no support. Well, if a child is, is assessed in primary school, ideally they should be assessed again uh, within a three year period in secondary school in order to try and get the appropriate accommodations, whether it's the software or the reader or the scanner, whatever. That's the, the, the general rule. And if a good case is actually put together on both the application form and as well as the school in question, that the child should get the appropriate support in question. But again, you know, it's the, the reality of it. But if, even if you're able to use some of the free technologies, and one item that I forgot to mention to you last week as well, there was another program called Bubble Us Mind Mapping Software. I might have mentioned it, but I might have forgotten to give you the reference. And it's, it's called, so if you go to Google and type in B-U-B-B-L dot U-S, it's a type of free mind mapping software as well. Okay? Okay, so just continuing on then, looking at the sequencing problems. This is just a little table outlining some of the sequencing problems that dyslexic pupils can experience. So it's divided into two columns. And the first column shows that us that would not have dyslexia can follow. So we would do step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, all the way up to step 10. But for a, a dyslexic child then, they might do step 2 first, then jump to step 4, back to step 1, up to step 6, 5, 7, 9, 8, 3, and finally then do 10. So really, the, the, at the end of the day, they can actually complete the task, but they have to take all these different rules and routines to actually get from start to finish. 
and it's, it, it can be quite complex. In terms of memory and organisation problems, such as forgetting when class exercises need to be completed and need to be submitted. So, in terms of like, when assignments were supposed to be due in, when projects are supposed to be handed in, having difficulties remembering when to bring in personal equipment, maybe for GEA, for getting their books or rules, or even maybe partially completing their homework as well, or even having problems organising their work. These dyslexic problems are very, very real. It can be the result of sheer frustration, felt at the lack of achievement by the learner. There can be a severe misunderstanding of the issues whether it is the teachers in question, whether it is the exercises, whether it is the SMEs, that's why it's all about building up your skills of knowledge and information. It can also lead to mental and physical exhaustion. So if a child constantly faces a barrier every single day of the week and that they're not able to overcome it, whether it's through a piece of software or whether it's with help from an SNA. It leads to mental and physical exhaustion and they become fed up and that's where the behavioural problems start. Despite that, dyslexic children, be it at primary, secondary school or at third level, do exhibit exceptional talents and strengths. The same with children with dyspraxia, with autism and all the other problems, but again, it's to try and pinpoint exactly what are they good at, what are they not good at. They can have excellent visual spatial skills. They can be very good at solving problems that you and me could take for ages to do. Certain dyslexic pupils can have excellent motivation skills as well as good oral skills, like in the case in your own school. The child was great at answering questions verbally, could do everything verbally, but when it would come down to reading and writing, forget about it. Okay? So then they can also have good decision skills, other abilities in terms of music, arts and crafts, woodwork, etc. How can the SMEs help? This is important and would we'll, we'll be well worth making a note of. In terms of reading words or sentences aloud with a pupil on a one to one basis. If you're not able to do that, then maybe take up my other idea in terms of using the software to, sh to actually read the words that the child is actually having problems with, so that they can actually physically see the words, they can actually hear the words as well. So, for example, if a pupil wants to assemble parts of a toy play and cannot read, what is to be done? If the SMEs can read aloud to the dyslexic pupil, it gives them encouragement. That's a very important thing to keep in mind. You have to constantly encourage and praise the child. Ask yourself, how do dyslexic children feel about it all? Right? So you can just ask them quite simply, look, this is what you're very, very good at. What other things do you feel that you're, that you're having problems with? Or that you're having a little bit of difficulty with? And we see if we can try and figure it out for you. Again, just all the time you support the language and encouragement wherever possible. From the child's viewpoint, he or she knows that there is something that they cannot do, yet other children can do it. Again, this is where the frustration and the stress levels uh, experience and happen. The child cannot fully understand what it is that he or she cannot do. And how to help them. Ensure the child understands that what he or she cannot do, it creates a greater acceptance in the environment, not just for the child with dyslexia, but with all the other learning disabilities as well. I know it can be easier said than done, but try and do your best in that respect. Take them slowly and give them the reading and spelling. If the SMEs can demonstrate a good understanding of a dyslexic child's disability, and you are not surprised that they feel frustrated. You will create better study and work conditions and a more holistic environment for everyone to work in until the child actually succeeds. Okay. Well, yeah, and she had been achieving a lot of things. Now, since she's got that thing, she's. Yes. Well, if, 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 a child, if, a, if a child or an individual is associated with a label, it's like a, a luggage tag. It's like 
it's, it's stuck with them then forever and it affects their self esteem. But what you could do is have this kind of open conversation with the child and say, Right, John, what do you feel that you can and what you cannot do? And write it down. And say, ask the child then, well, how would you like to be able to overcome it? And you, they would say, well, I might like maybe to, to, to have uh, shorter reading passages to do at home. And ask them then, okay, do you like using uh, IT, you know, or using a computer, computer software? And they say, oh, yeah, I do. And how good are you uh, with hearing things and listening to things? Oh, yeah, I'm good at that, but I'm not great at reading, I don't like reading. And why don't you like reading? It takes a lot of time, and it takes me so much time to figure out the words. So what you could do is, and always try and keep everything simple. Those of you that have mobile phones or smartphones, have any of you ever tried using the voice recorder on a mobile phone? You have? Okay. There's always one person. Good for you. How have you found using it? Um, I found it pretty good, which is very distinct. You have to be exactly. You have to be very, very distinct. Yeah. Very distinct. And did it actually work for you the time that you actually used it in, in the activity it with the church? Well, it did. Yeah. Okay. For those of you that don't have the mobile, or that don't use mobile phones, now I do know in primary school that there is a big issue about mobile phones. <laughs> Sometimes, the, the class teacher would ask the children to look over the phones at the beginning of the morning and they'd get back the phones then at the end of the day. What you could do is, you could ask the classroom teacher for a load of the mobile phone that belongs to the ACN child. So you could take it maybe during lunchtime or during a particular period when you're free. And if a child is actually having problems speaking words, you go to the voice recorder on it, and all smartphones and all mobile phones record. And I'll just give you a quick demo. So you go to the second phone on the mobile phone. You go to media. Media. Now it can be put between phone to phone. And you choose an option called recorder. Right? And I'm going to just give you a quick example of how I actually use it. So, cat, C A T, bat, B A T, mat, M A T. Cat, C A T, bat, B A T. Mat, M A T. Okay? So, and I have to perform the recording and I just take the last recorder. Okay? So, that's just a simple way of addressing their strengths as well as their weaknesses. They've got great oral abilities and you're using technology in a simple way. You could actually even do the same thing as well for reading a passage of text. So if a child has to read maybe four or five lines of text at home in the night, why not record it on a mobile phone further? And let them listen to the text. So if they're at home and they're looking at the television or they're doing other activities, they can actually listen to the text that which they're supposed to know about come the following day. Yes, exactly. A tape, uh, a tape recorder, mobile phone, if you can still get access to the bank of six years, you will still. And you can call it. And they say that. Well, I think the phone, basically, a voice recorder is another tape, a tape recorder. So, a tape recorder, a voice recorder, a tape recorder. The voice recorder on the smartphone, or even on the iPad as well. Do you assume your students use iPads or would? Yeah. No, we have a nice package, it's a nice password, just wouldn't be that phone. Okay. Well, even outside, why not choose the sound recorder on the desktop computer? Yeah, because the sound recorder, and that comes with every computer, whether it's Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, or Windows 8. There's an actual sound recorder. And I can show you 
and you'd be the best out of the brain as well. Yeah. Okay? There's also, um, you said it's using star, star form of sight. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's another program as well uh, called Star Spell. Yeah. Did you ever use no, that? Star Spell. Star Spell, yeah. Uh, yeah. Star Spell would be definitely uh, the, the last. The latest program of Starspin is called Starspin 2.4. But Starfall, I am a familiar with it, but I haven't used it a whole lot. You find it quite good. Excellent. Okay. But then again, you're limited once you've read whatever is on that. Yeah. You don't need to put into it yourself. Okay. So, really, the, the, the other methods of helping are in terms of just praising the child rather than blaming them in terms of their problems. Very important to remember that. Always try to appreciate what the child can do and what they can't. And the more he or she will trust you as somebody sympathetic to their problems. And again, it's about building their character, building their confidence as well. Mutual sound, uh, sorry, mutual trust and sound teaching methods. The simpler your ideas are, the better. Like maybe using the voice recorder on the mobile phone, or sometimes we use the sound recorder on the computer, use the iPad, doing something simple, but yes, making it effective. Like what I've just said, using effective methods of help generates mutual trust. So, just a recap on the themes that I discussed in, the, in tonight's lecture. I looked at the participants' questions, which were on this particular page, okay, and next week I'll address another two questions for you. I looked briefly at the whole concept of learning disabilities. This was closely then followed by the topic of dyslexia and examining the different types of daily problems which they experience. I also looked at the range of problems affecting primary school dyslexic pupils as well as examining their strengths and finally then discussing how new DSNA can help a dyslexic child in your classroom. So that's the actual end of the lecture. For the practical class, I'm going to be looking at Clara Reed, which is this particular program, and this is a snapshot of it on the screen. It's the type of text-to-speech program used for reading typed content within a word processor. And it contains a whole host of like reading tools, spacing buttons, font buttons, homophones, and so forth. I have handles on this, and I think now it's time for a quick pop-up for